Welcome back to Camera West TV. My name is Carlo, and on today's episode of Thumbprints and Signatures, we have the Leica CM featuring the 40 Sumerit F2.4. The Leica CM is built with a titanium body and houses a 40 f2.4 Sumerit lens. Now this lens is actually the final design of the 40mm lineup for Leica's lenses. Even though it was only built for this point and shoot camera, it took the original design of the 40 Sumicron C which we talked about in our previous video, you can find the link down below or up here, and improved it to where you don't necessarily need an f2 aperture and we'll get into that in a little bit. We're going to be shooting the Leica CM featuring the 40 Sumerit f2.5 and we got a roll of Portra 400. So as you can see there's just a little LED screen for your different settings. It's a traditional point and shoot and you just pop open the back and you load the canister onto the side, pull it over and Wait for it to catch, and boom, we're ready to go. A little slow startup, but it works. This camera succeeded the Leica Mini Lux and was produced from 2004 to 2006, making it kind of a rare camera to find with such a short production time. So in order to compete against big names like the Contax T2 or T3 or even the Nikon 35Ti, Leica had to redesign the Mini Lux, which had a common error problem, which this camera improved upon amongst other things such as a bigger viewfinder, a much more usable LED screen, and much more simple design. Leica wanted to keep the CM fairly simple, so they took inspiration from the M and thus the Compact M was born. The touch is a little, a little awkward. It doesn't feel like it's very responsive in that way, but you have to just like really push it down. But maybe that's just old 90s design. As you can see too, you can select your different apertures all the way up to F22. And then you have a manual focus dial, which is actually very useful for if you want to take full control and use it as a true Compact M body, CM, boom. You can see that this camera does resemble a miniature M, and like I intended for the CM to be as simple as possible for the everyday user, or if you wanted to be much more in control of your camera, you can set your aperture settings on this little tab right here, or you can focus manually with this other dial. You also have a full LED screen on the back, which lets you control all your settings, from self timer to turning on the flash or turning it off. This camera also features TTL flash capabilities with an external flash. The on switch is actually on the bottom, which is a little bit different compared to other point and shoot cameras where it's usually on the top plate. So all you do is switch it and it folds right into the body, making it a true compact camera. Wow, that thing is quiet. It's like kind of hard to tell if I took the photo or not. Using this camera was very easy. It's like any other point and shoot. You just hold it up to your eye, frame, point, click, and boom, you have your photo. But if you felt a little bit more adventurous, you could, you know, use the manual settings here, choose your aperture, choose your focus, and you could treat it as if it were an M camera. But I think that takes away from the whole experience of a point and shoot where you just want to react as quickly as possible. Some things that kind of got in the way when I was using it is there is a auto sleep function that I couldn't really figure out how to turn off. So maybe someone in the comments could figure that out. They could list that down below for anyone else who has a CM. But I found myself trying to turn my camera on while waiting for shots or seeing a shot appear and 
I wouldn't be able to turn it on quick enough. And with the shutter being so sensitive, sometimes I would be pressing the shutter to wake up the camera and then I would accidentally take a photo of my feet. And there would be times where I would try and pull this camera out of my pocket or my case and I noticed that it was knocked out of AF, which it is very easy to do to knock out of the autofocus position. So some photos came out a little bit out of focus just because it wasn't at the right setting. So if you are using this camera, there's quite a bit of adjustment, um, especially since the dials are so close to where your hands move and use the camera. So when you power on the camera, it has a default setting. And so usually the flash will be engaged. So every time I turned on the camera, I would turn off the flash just so I wouldn't have it pop off anytime I want to take a photo. There would be times where the camera went into sleep mode and it also resets that setting. So that is probably one thing about this camera that was slightly annoying. Every time you wake it up or turn it on, the flash would engage. So sometimes I would get ready for a photo and the flash would just go off. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, but, but sometimes I don't prefer using flash for some of my photos, but you know, I think for its intended use, if you were going to just use it as a snapshot camera, then that would probably be a good benefit. The startup time is a little slow, so it's definitely recommended that you keep the camera open whenever you're ready to take a photo. Even the delay of waking it up when it's in sleep mode is a little annoying, but it's better than waiting for that or that. But enough about the camera, let's talk about the lens. Unfortunately, we ran out of time filming the first portion of the video, so I decided to take the CM out on my own and put another roll through it. And so here are the photos. Since this lens was made after the 40 Summicron C, they improved upon a lot of its coatings and its design. And so I would say that its rendering is a little bit more on the modern side and it's extremely sharp. Most imperfections that were found in the 40 Summicron C were improved upon and you get a very nice clean look along with very shallow depth of field and good contrast. Overall, it's just a beautiful lens and if we can rehouse this, hint hint, or if anyone knows where we can get this rehoused, that would be awesome. Who is this camera for? This camera is honestly for anyone who wants this lens. I think one of the downfalls for the premium point and shoot market is they developed such good lenses, but for cameras that inevitably will break. So like I was saying before, if there was a way to rehouse this lens and use it on a digital system or even put it onto a M mount film system, you could breathe new life into this lens and really push it to a limit that we've probably never seen. I want to thank Underdog Film Lab in Oakland for developing and scanning our film. Uh, they don't sponsor the channel or anything. I just really like their work. And if you're in the Bay Area, you should check them out. And leave a comment down below on what lenses or lens you'd like to see on a future episode. There's plenty to choose from, so knowing what you guys want to see would totally help out. This is Carlo from Camera West TV. I'll see you next time.